Coming on the heels of securing a collaboration agreement and strategic investment of $16.9 million for Sumitomo Metals Mining, I'm today joined today with Nano One CEO Dan Blundell to speak on the significance of this development for his company. My good sir, welcome. Thanks, Brendan. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's a pleasure to have you. Well, first off, congratulations on your collaboration agreement with Sumitomo. Can you speak towards the significance of this agreement for Nano One and your future operations? Uh, listen, Brandon, it builds on um, a whole number of other uh, partnerships and collaborations that we've had and, of course, successes we've had um, uh, towards the commercialization of our technology. But uh, Sumitomo Metal Mining is probably one of the most respected uh, 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 cathode uh, and and mining and refining uh, companies in the world. They're, they're, they are probably the most... Uh, vertically integrated miner um, in the space. Um, they uh, they mine nickel, they refine it, uh, they turn it into uh, NCA for uh, for high energy density, long range electric vehicle batteries, and have been doing so uh, longer than uh, anyone uh, in the world. And so, um, you know, tremendous amount of experience. A very large company, actually, you know, part of, of course, the Sumitomo family of of companies in uh, in Japan. They uh, they bring a tremendous amount of, of know how industrialization know how uh, they understand uh, they understand the market very well um, the supply chain very well and uh, and it's um, uh, it's quite a uh, quite an honor to uh, have brought a Japanese partner to the table with such an amazing pedigree. Yeah, absolutely. And I can imagine so as well. And we're going to dive a lot more into this agreement and what it means for your company and the industry as a whole. But I want to start with something really quickly. For those who may not be, uh, may not understand the work that you've been doing with your team, can you give us a quick overview of your one pot process and why it's so unique that it's garnered such attention from a multi billion dollar company uh, like Sumutomo? I, th I think at, at, at its basis, the, the one pot technology, um, uh, one pot process is a um, a technology that allows us to uh, combine the key ingredients, lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt, or lithium, iron, and phosphorus into a cathode material without going through um, a chemical intermediates like sulfates and without uh, producing a sulfate waste stream. So uh, there's a uh, there's a basically a simplification in the supply chain, and there's an elimination of all the water waste and all the uh, resulting sulfate waste. So that uh, that environmental improvement and that um, uh, supply chain uh, simplification is of fantastic is of great interest not only to big integrated miners like Sumitomo and Rio Tinto, one of our other partners, but also to the OEMs who are looking to find ways to collapse, simplify the supply chain, reduce waste improve the uh, the sustainability, the environmental improvement, and ultimately improve the cost um, and uh, and simplify and secure the supply chain. So those are all really key components that drive the kind of uh, international global interest that we're seeing in Nano One. Yeah, fantastic. And I appreciate that for anybody who's uh, new to this story for getting that little bit of understanding there. Well, we're turning back to the agreement. Sumitomo is making a substantial $16.9 million equity investment into Nano One. How do you plan to utilize this investment to advance your goals? So most, most of those funds are going to be focused on our operations in Quebec. So last year, uh, we completed the acquisition of Johnson Matthey's um, uh, lithium iron phosphate facility in Condiac, Quebec, just outside of Montreal. It's on the south shore, about, uh, about 20 kilometers outside of Montreal. Um, uh, with that came a, a, a team of 50 very experienced people who had been making lithium iron phosphate in Quebec for the last... Uh, actually, they've been making LFP there probably since... Uh, 2006. So uh, it is um, by far the most experienced LFP production team outside of China. And, and they'd be making LFP longer than almost anyone in the world uh, from, from a commercial point of view. Albeit very, it's a small team uh, by anything we've uh, seen in China. Um, it is still uh, it is still probably the uh, the most experienced team in North America, uh, if not uh, if not around the world. So that experience really provides us a launching pad. Um, listen, the the the, um, the learning curves of, of of commercializing technology, supplying the automotive company, putting the right uh, putting the right. Uh, certification process in place, the quality assurances systems, the uh, the EHS, the, the, the you know the, the the health and safety systems, all of those are really paramount to being able to supply the automotive industry. We got that um, lock, stock, and barrel ready to go 
um, uh, uh, with, with this team and with the facility. We are converting that facility to the one pot process to drive down the cost. Uh, we've eliminated about half the equipment uh, in that facility because we have a much simpler process. We've eliminated all the wastewater uh, handling and all the all the chemical handling, uh, waste chemical handling because we don't need any of it. And uh, and we are just starting to turn those uh, machines on uh, and starting to supply materials to our uh, uh, to our our partners. Um, what will come from this? So that 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 funding from um, from Sumitomo will help us, you know, operate and 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 drive the piloting of all this stuff. But ultimately, it's also going to help us um, improve the process uh, and help us find a, a way to integrate it with uh, with Sumitomo's LFP ambitions in Japan and, and elsewhere in the world. So we're going to be combining our our knowledge. They also have an LFP facility um uh that they recently acquired um that used a similar technology to what we had what uh johnson matthew used to use so it's a very natural conversion of their facility for instance um uh that that might very well come from this collaboration so uh, there's a lot of fantastic synergy here uh with the with that team but it really does help provide us that really that the big extra boost to to launch what we're doing in quebec um ultimately um that's just a that's just a uh a platform for us to expand into much, much larger production, uh, going from 2,000 tons to 25,000 tons to hundreds of thousands of tons of, of material uh, in various, um, you know, aiming to do that in various jurisdictions around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that. And speaking about uh, the plants that we were just talking about now, uh, Nano One also plans to build its first commercial LFP plant. Can you share more information about this facility and the future plans for it? Yes. So, so as I as I explained, the existing facility there um, had been making LFP for the last ten years, and 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 actually even even before that in a, uh, in a much smaller facility. They the um, once we have all of that operational, that'll be about two thousand tons a year, uh, which is a really small amount. Um, right now in China, they're making over a million tons of LFP. Um, in order to scale up for the rest of the world, we have to get to many hundreds of thousands of tons. Uh, really, the the design of a plant that we can then uh, uh, replicate and duplicate in uh, in in various jurisdictions around the world. So, an automotive plant might have three or four of these lines um, strapped together to bring them up to 100,000 tons, for instance. And uh, we could see doing that in Quebec and Central Canada. We could see doing it in the U.S. We could see doing it in India and Japan and Europe as well. Um, uh, really, it's design once, build many. Uh, that's really the philosophy we need going forward. Um, what we have is we have this fantastic facility to prove it, to demonstrate it, to use as a launch pad, to train um, the uh, uh, the people uh, that are going to be needed to run these facilities, to use as a as a as a test platform for the engineering designs for the for the larger capacity, and and ultimately to um, uh, to refine the process further um, as we uh, as we start to deploy it uh, out into the field. Yeah, and you spoke a lot of there, uh, a lot about growth, and when that's something that I think a lot of people are very curious about right now. Uh, if we can take a moment to talk about the macro uh, macro picture here for investors to get a better understanding, what are the anticipated market trends for LFP and NMC cathode materials, especially in regions such as Japan and North America? Well, uh, listen, uh, uh, 90, 99% of the world's LFP is made in China today. Um, uh, it's, I, it's, it's actually it's probably even a larger number than that, 99.9, but... Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, the the facility we have there um, as a nameplate capacity of 2,400 tons, it, it has to go to many hundreds of thousands of tons in North America and well into the millions of tons um, uh, in the rest of the world outside of China. So there are a very big um, a very big amount of demand coming for lithium iron phosphate. It will go into not only into industrial applications and industrial vehicles, but we see it um, going into the energy storage market to uh, store energy from renew renewable energy sources like wind and solar, um, but also uh, mass market electric vehicles. Because it, in order to 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 in order to have mass adoption of electric vehicles, they need to be lower cost. And a lower cost vehicle has a smaller battery. A smaller battery needs to be cycled more often. Uh, NMC, you can't cycle it um, uh, with that kind of frequency because it's too hard on the battery. LFP has the cyclability. And so uh, LFP is really the only technology that allows us to go to smaller, more affordable batteries that need to be charged more often, 
but um, they bring the affordability down, and uh, that's we we believe that will uh, drive the uh, drive the the uh, really the mass market in, in electric vehicles. We've seen it happen in China. As soon yeah. as they started taking the incentives off of the high nickel NMC long range batteries, LFP took off. It's now sixty mm-hmm. to seventy percent of the market share in China, and uh, it's not a China thing. Um, it's going to happen uh, elsewhere in the world as well. And it's going to be driven by the mass market electric vehicles and, as I say, by the energy storage market. Yeah. And then sticking on the line of production and licensing and coming back to the news release, uh, the news release mentions plans for a potential joint venture or licensing agreement for large scale production of LFP and NMC materials in various global ju- uh, jurisdictions. Can you provide insights into the timeline and scope of these potential agreements? Uh, uh, we, so it's all gonna, it's all gonna really start to kick off when we, after we get our first, um, uh, offtake agreements and we're, we're very close to, uh, to getting there right now. We're shipping materials out just two weeks ago. We announced, um, that we had proven the, uh, the existing reactors at the facility, which are basically full size reactors. It's exactly the size of reactors we're going to use at a full scale plant. We've been able to prove that the LFP uh, can be made consistently and reliably in those reactors. That gives us the full confidence that it's a scalable technology. And we're able to ship those materials now off for validation and ultimately for offtake with our with our partners. That offtake will drive uh, will drive the sort of initial expansion to the twenty five thousand ton plant. Uh, but we believe, in parallel to that, we'll see demand for uh, many hundreds of thousands of tons. And so we're ramping up with uh, uh, with third party sort of engineering uh, companies to uh, to develop the design of that plant so that they can be all rolled out really in parallel. Um, uh, to what we're going to be doing uh, on the on the uh, in the existing facility there. Yeah, fantastic and and, and great to hear. It, it's fantastic to see this type of development uh, domestically back at home, especially in the home country. Uh, thank you so much, Dan, for your time. Very excited to, about everything that's been happening. Congratulations once in, once again on that uh, agreement, and looking forward to hearing what's uh, what's in store for your company again here in the near future. For anyone who wants to find out more information, just go to that website just down below that you're seeing there now, and you can find all the information you'd like to on Nano One. Thanks again, Dan. Thank you, Brandon.